Oh hey, struggling with closures are you? I'm here to help. If you've been going through all the blog posts, all the videos and still just can't wrap your head around how they work or what they are, I'm hoping that this is going to be the ultimate video for you. If you don't understand what they are by the time you get through to the end of this, leave me a comment and a thumbs down. Let's get to it. So I've just opened up a new playground. We have a variable that says greeting, hello playground. And this means we can make changes to it. We can say greeting equals empty. We can run that code. That's great. And we also have, we could change it to a let, which allows us to not edit that code. Okay, so we get an error for that. Great. And I guess, you know, we can create a closure. Okay, there's the syntax. It's a little bit weird. Right, if you don't understand it, that's okay. This is the de declaration for that closure. And you've probably heard a lot that the closures are functions. Closure is just a function that you can pass around as a parameter. So what does that, what does that mean though? Like you get told these things and it doesn't really make much sense because you've got nothing else to plug it into in your head, right? You've got no context about these things. So what, this means nothing, okay? It's just like weird syntax and it's confusing. So what is a parameter? With parameter. This is a parameter. Anything you pass through to a function. So we could pass through a string. So we could say function. Function with parameter. We can pass through our greeting. Let's clean this up just a little bit. And maybe we want to print that parameter. We run this and we get hello playground. We're calling a function, which is printing the parameter that we're passing through. And we can move this down here so it's a little bit more clear. So it's kind of how you would structure your code really. Keep keep things close together that, that are related to each other. But sometimes you don't want to just pass through a value or a reference. Sometimes you want to pass through a function and that's what closures allow you to do. You can pass through an entire function here that's another way of looking at it. So what if our greeting instead was a... A computed variable. Uh, let's go string. I mean, a computed variable looks very much like a function to me. So how do we take that one step further, right? What if we would change this to a function? That almost identical again, except now we have a problem. So we can call this directly. We can call, we can pass through the result of a function and our code works fine again. So what we've done is just put those parentheses on the end of you know, change greeting and now we're passing through greeting as a parameter and all we're doing now is not passing through the function we're passing through the result of the function we're passing through the string after calling so this gets called and then the result of that is passed through to here but what if we want to call the function later we don't want to do it now as it's getting passed through we want to call it later so we can do that too so what we need to do is instead of passing through the string we need to create a new type to be passed through here which can be called as a function, right? Which can be run. So at the moment, we've just got the value coming through, which is string. So what we need to do now is implement that weird syntax we saw before, and we will return string, because that's what this returns. This function returns a string. So we're going to put through a function, these little parentheses that returns a string. And then down here, we need to call that function, which is print param. And then down here, We've got our greeting, we can hit run, and we're still getting hello playground, everything compiles fine. We've only just made the tiniest change here, but instead of passing through the string value, this has not been evaluated. Greeting is just the function. This is all we're passing through to function with parameter up here. This has not been evaluated. This does not exist yet. When we print and we call that function, it now exists. This is evaluated at the point of calling print. Does that make sense? If it doesn't make sense, 
leave a comment. Excellent, so there's more we can do with this now. So instead of passing through this function, why don't we create the function on the fly? So let's just get rid of this. And let's get rid of this. Let's go function with parameter. Let's create this on the fly. Let's say we're passing through Look at that. Prince, hello player ground again. We've just shortened our code by using a closure. How cool is that? So looking at this, you're probably thinking, this is so weird. I'm not used to this kind of syntax. Believe me, Objective-C was far worse when it came to blocks slash closure syntax. This is such a relief having to work with it this way. So some other things we might want to be able to do with these closures, okay? So what if we want to make changes here? So let's say we want to take in a value, change it, and then return it. All right, so this isn't going to work anymore. We need to do a fix here. So we need to pass through our string, which might be string value. And then up here will be whatever string gets passed through. So maybe we say, let hello equal hello we pass through hello and then here we've got our string value let's say we return string value plus playground we run that Oop. This might be a bit cleaner if we do it this way and it's the same result again We've just, you know, pushed some things around a little bit, right? So this is completely valid. What we want to do is we're passing back this. <laughs> we've created hello. This is a bit more complex, right? So we've created our hello string. We're passing it through to this function here. So that's what this is. This is related to this. These are the same. Maybe if I change the name of it, help you out a little bit. So we've got hello. Anything in these curly braces is the function, it's the closure. And this is getting passed through here. Okay, everything in here comes through here. And as it comes through, we've got hello, which is getting passed into here, which is hello and playground. Now this is a really sort of complex example of what you can do with these things. And if you don't get this, that's completely fine. I just wanted to throw it in there for fun. <laughs> Obviously, most of the work you're doing is not going to be this self-referencing -refer thing with closures and all this confusion and stuff. This this is hard for me to get my head around. If you want to follow through the, this logically, maybe you can draw up a flowchart of how this works on a with pen and paper, and that might help you understand where things are coming in, where they're leaving, and all that sort of stuff, how they relate to each other. Okay. So another thing that we might do with closures is run some task, and then we want to do return the value after that task has been completed. But this might be a long running task, something on the background thread, right? We want to be notified when something is finished. And you'll see this in Apple's URL session. So now that we're using async await, it's not really much of a thing anymore. But in the past, we would use closures. We would call a make a network request and that network, network request would take time. And when it comes back, we do something with it. So to give you an example of a request, we're not going to do a real one. Just this is an example. We're going to mock one up. So we might have request and maybe we want to pass through a URL and let's just make this a string because I don't really feel like creating URLs right now. And let's say this is the response and let's go with, I think this is correct. Let's say we we call, uh, we go response uh, and we'll pass through, I don't know, we'll make it uppercase or something. No, we'll, we'll, pass, we'll make the response something else, like completed. Let's make it, here's your data, your data, your data. And then down here, we'll call the request. So let's do that. 
request. We'll pass through our URL, which will be like HTTPS, scourgegroup.com. And then we want to do something when the response comes back. So in here, we would have long running code, running code. Um, I don't know, make, make your app do something else while this is happening. And then our response is here, and then maybe we'll just print it. Print response. Now, if we run this, we get the response of here's your data, which makes sense. Great. So what we can usually do, let's say we have a big chunk of code and we've got um, some task here. You know, it might be another function of some sort. And then down here, we've got some other task, some other task. What will happen is your code will run in sequence. It'll hit this first, run whatever function you've got here. It'll start making the request. It'll come into here and it will start running stuff on a background thread. That's generally what happens when you do a network request. It's happening on the background thread. And while that's happening, this will continue chugging away in the background and some other task will be immediately run while this is running. So that what you generally want to do is act upon the response when it comes back, but you don't want your app to stall at this point. If that would happen, your phone, your device would lock up and you'd have to wait for that network call to come back before your app can continue doing things. And so now that we've got this set up, when, let's use a real world example. Okay, so let's say you've got some sort of task going on here. Maybe you're creating the URL from, from other information elsewhere in your app. You want to make this request. So you've got your task, you make the request, and then you want the app to move on to other stuff, okay? This task, let's say you're downloading a bunch of images and it's going to take maybe 30 seconds. You don't want the device to stop and wait for 30 seconds while the users, like the, the screen will be frozen. They wouldn't be able to do anything while it's downloading. That's if you have this running sequentially. You want them to be running at the same time. So what the closure allows us to do is get notified when that long running task is finished. If we want to run code once those images come back, right? So instead of saying print and response, maybe here we say set images to image view, right? You can run this code. You can run this code immediately after while this is happening in the background. You know, uh, another task, um, and it, it, we'll just we just continue on, right? Task, 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 and then once the response comes back, your code will come from here and jump straight back up in here and run whatever's inside this closure. That's the point of using these. So another great thing with this is that they're reusable, right? You can pass any diff many different types of functions into another function. So we've got this request that hits up Google and gives us a response. So here's another great thing about using these closures. We can call this request function as many times as we like. And we might get a different response, right? From each of these endpoints. Uh, Google might return something different than what Apple.com might return, okay? And we can just keep doing this. If we didn't have access to closures, a code would look like this. You know, maybe here we have to do our URL. And since I don't have access to a response here, like here's your data, let's say, you know, here we would get, I don't know, we get data, return, here's your data. Okay, request to Google. Great, that's probably fine if you're just doing one of them, but can you imagine if you had to do, oh gosh, request to, request to Apple. And then because of this, you have to copy this implementation in every single, like you, you just, you're basically just, copy and pasting stuff at that point, right? With this, all we care about is responding to what comes back from that call. Okay, we're giving it a parameter, which is URL. So we give it the endpoint we want to retrieve data from. All that data handling can be done here. The request, the network calls, the waiting around for that to come back is done within this function. But we really only care about getting that response at the end. And this helps with that. Right? We don't want to redo this implementation over and over again for every single time we want to do a request. 
We want to hide all that implementation details away and we just want to deal with what comes back. That's all we care about. We pass through our URL. We only care about what the response is. And in some cases, if you're doing like a JSON sort of uh, URL with this, you can, you know, I, I've created these things where I've passed through a type. Uh, it might be like my JSON type self, you know, and this, and this will, and the response here, the re this will be, I don't know, a generic. You can pass through around generics doing stuff like this, right? So T or whatever it is. And then, you know, that's the type you're passing through and you pass through type of T, um, response is T, uh, type dot self. I think we can do stuff like this. I'm getting myself all confused, but you can pass through. Basically what you can do is you can say, I want the response to be of type something. So that might be a little structure. You go my JSON and then maybe it has an ID or something like this. And you could pass that through as a parameter up here. My JSON dot self. And then this response will be of that type. Okay, it won't be a string anymore. It'll be whatever type you pass through. This is what I've done here is wrong, but it's just an example. I'm trying to get through it quickly, right? Um, but you can you can do these kinds of things and like finesse these little closures. Don't be scared of them, like use them, play around with it, go through the same steps that I did, breaking it down into smaller chunks of information so it's easier to digest and understand. I've shown you a variety of different ways. I hope at least one of them, hopefully more, but hopefully at least one of them was enough to like finally make a click for you. If not, let me know and what I'll do is if there's enough people that still are like, actually this confused me more, uh, I'll just delete the video and I'll upload another one or something. Um, maybe in the responses you could give me some examples of what helped you understand what closures are. That could be helpful for me to make a new video on this. I want this to be, I want to create the ultimate video on YouTube of Swift closures. Uh, anyway, thanks for joining me today. That's it. I'll see you next time.